Hey, what a beautiful time to be living here in Fort Wayne, Indiana with everything they're doing downtown here at Promenade Park. Oh, this is just gorgeous. And you may not realize it, but Promenade, the official term, is just a leisurely walk around the water. It's kind of what we're doing <laughs> right what now. we're doing. Right. This is awesome. There are so many fun things to do down here. Now, my favorite is kayaking. It's really easy to stop here at Fort Wayne Outfitters and Bike Depot, rent a kayak, and take a nice stroll down the river. Yeah, Elizabeth, they have set this up perfectly for families. I love the gaming area with foosball, ping pong, cornhole. You can yep. spend all day here with friends. <laughs> and guys, true. take a look at these trees. Oh. Take, away the, take a look at this walkway. They call this the treetop canopy walkway, and it's cool. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. And the best part about the canopy is it's connected to the River Greenway, which means it's got 100 miles worth of trails that go all through Fort Wayne. So no matter where you're at, you can bike, walk, or run, and you can get here to the promenade. That's great. That's neat. And once you get here with your family, you can hit the uh, splash pad where you can enjoy the water, cool off. It's a beautiful place, and if you've got some time, Sweet Breeze is here to give you a tour of the river from anywhere from 20 minutes to two hours. Wonderful options down here. Now, did you guys know how that name, Sweet Breeze, was on that boat? Here's why. Chief Little Turtle had a daughter. His name, her name was Sweet Breeze. Now, she married um, William Wells. You've heard that name before. He was a spy for the American Army and also the Indians, and that's how we got Spy Run, Spy Run Creek, and also Wells Street and Wells County. Hmm. Well, speaking of Wells, Tony, I mean, we're right here at the Wells Street Bridge, and this wrought iron bridge is a landmark here in Fort Wayne. I mean, I myself can think of two to four weddings that wow. I've gone to here on this bridge. And it's a great pathway, too, to get to the new Compass Pavilion so you can ride your bikes or come out here for a stroll with your family. You really got to check it out. Awesome. This is great, but guess what? This leisurely walk, we got to open the show up. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Between the Studs. We are Granite Ridge Builders, custom builders serving northern Indiana, northwest Ohio, and also parts of southern Michigan. We have been building custom homes for almost two decades, and we're really passionate about what we do. So join us today as we explore the processes, the trends, and also tips that characterize today's new home. Thanks for watching. Welcome to Between the Studs. We are on location today. We are down at beautiful Promenade Park in downtown Fort Wayne. 4.1 acres of new park that everyone in this city is just excited and buzzing about. There's people downtown now, all types of day, night. They're enjoying this park. Yeah, and we're right down from the confluence, is where, which is where the St. Joe and the St. Mary's come together to form the Maumee. And obviously Fort Wayne was founded on the rivers. I mean, it was literally their sustaining life with the rivers. And with Promenade Park, probably the first time in a long time, we've drawn our attention back to the rivers and they did a phenomenal job. And you know, and speaking of those rivers, it was Chief Little Turtle who actually coined the phrase, the glorious Golden Gateway to the West for this area. It's because we had the rivers, and then the rivers flowed through the Wabash Erie Canal to the Wabash River, and then on to the Mississippi River. And then if you go south or take a left, you could end up in the Gulf of Mexico. Speaking of Chief Little Turtle, his camp was just down the street, Lakeside Park, called Kikianga. And a lot of people might not know how we got our name, and that came from General Anthony Wayne. There was two large defeats of the American Army until General Anthony Wayne came through over at Fallen Timbers and defeated the Indians, and that's where we built a fort called Fort Wayne. So another thing, Tony, that was critical with the Battle of Fallen Timbers was our ability to defeat them due to a natural disaster that occurred right along the Maumee River. So the Battle of Fallen Timbers was caused due to a tornado that had gone through that area. And when the tornado removed the trees, it removed the Indians' ability to hide behind those trees to use their bow and arrows. So that left General Matt Anthony Wayne with a critical advantage because we also had some great people on our team. We had Captain Meriwether Lewis, Lieutenant William Clark, so you may know them as William and Clark, and then William Henry Harrison, who later became president, and also Baron von Steuben. I've heard that name, Steuben County. Yeah, so Baron von Steuben was probably one of the more well-known people at that time because he created a disciplined environment for our soldiers. So they were critical in training our soldiers how to shoot, <laughs> and when we and seems we, like a basic science I know, there, I know. But when we removed those trees and the ability to hide, and then we added those disciplined styles, you know, amongst those four people, we had a significant advantage during the Battle of Fallen Timbers. Anyways, I heard there was 3,500 militia against about 1,000 to 2,000 um, Indians, so there was another little advantage too. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Fort Wayne continued to grow on the basis of the rivers when transportation and uh, trade, and it continued to grow till we saw the towpath come in, which was built uh, to help take the, the boats from one river to another to, again, help with the trade. 
But what happened is the railroad really started to grow in prominence about that time. They started to use the towpath in the same way, took those same towpaths, turned them into uh, railroad areas. And then the next big change came with the Lincoln Highway coming through the same area. So again, Indiana being the crossroads of America, transportation and travel were a huge part of what we had. So Luke, you talked about us refocusing on the rivers. What a lot of folks don't know is the bulk of our drinking water today comes from these rivers. Since 1931, we've been nationally recognized as having some of the purest and cleanest drinking water in our country. So not only does our filtration plant purify the water, but it's also been recognized for its beauty. We spent an additional $50,000 back in 1931 to go to a collegiate Gothic style. We're gonna talk about that filtration plant later on in the show. And stay tuned because we're going to talk about at the end of the show how the water goes from our river to your home and looks like this. So wow. we're going to have it go from this. Yes. Oh, wow. To Whoa. this. To that. <laughs> Major. Tony, I'll give you a Cheers. Dollar. I think you guys should tell us. I need a. I need a lot more than a dollar if I'm doing that. It's going to be great. It's going to be a good show. We are at the corner of East Harrison and Superior at one of the entrances to Promenade Park here. And with this, we have one of the most beautiful pieces of art you're going to see in downtown Fort Wayne. It's the newest uh, piece of art here, and it's called Convergence. Yeah, Izzy, this was created by an artist named Linda Howard based out of Florida. They commissioned four or five people to come out and present their, their work, and they chose Linda specifically based on this design. So the sculpture behind us is over 19 feet tall, 28 feet in diameter, and weighs over 2,400 pounds. It's a beautiful piece and probably the most interesting part to me is that as you walk around you get a different perspective, a different view as you walk around the entire piece of art. No view is, is, is uh, duplicated. And the same with the way the light re reflects through it and shines through it. It's a beautiful piece and you've got to come down here and see it for yourself. Yeah, Linda wanted to really mimic the, the ebbs and flow that water takes in the sculpture. She was quoted as saying, the form takes on the rhythm of the water and the heartbeat of the rivers in a powerful combined force. We're so proud to be a part of Fort Wayne and what they're doing down here in Promenade Park. Come down and see it. Water is such an important resource and it's something that we take for granted all of the clean potable water that's available to us every day. It's so important for our bodies. It helps deliver oxygen, helps remove the waste from them. And it's recommended the typical person, depending on how active you are, have eight eight ounce glasses of water per day. Now Elizabeth, let's look at the whole world. 97% mm -hmm. of the water that's found on the earth is salt water. And then roughly about 2% is locked up in the polar ice caps. And then less than 1% is actually safe for us to drink. Uh, so that's a very, very minor percent. However, we're very fortunate where we're here because out our back door, the Great Lakes makes up out of that 1%, 21% of that is the Great Lakes. We are lucky. And now the typical household, 85% of the United States households get their water from a source like the water filtration plant. So it's delivered to their home. You don't even have to think about it. About 15% of households in the United States have a private well. Yeah, and you mentioned it. we are very fortunate because there's over 1 billion people in the world that do not have access to clean drinking water. All we have to do is turn on a faucet and Fort Wayne provides that for us. So uh, something that we take for granted, but we really should be very appreciative of. Now drinking water is important, but we use water a lot of other ways in our daily life. And the typical person uses about 100 gallons a day. So a household might use 300, 400 gallons a day. So one of those would be your toilet about 24 gallons a day per person for flushing the toilet. Another one would be your shower. That's about 20 gallons per day per person. Then you have things like your washing machine, your dishwasher, and other sources that you might use water on a daily basis. Right. Now, Elizabeth, this whole show is pretty well dedicated to water as well as the rivers, and we're here at Promenade Park, so I'm excited to do the rest of the segments where we really get to explore this great place. Now, a lot of our Fort Wayne parks were built on the river, but Promenade is the first one that really focuses on the river. And we were talking, we don't know that much about the history of the rivers, about like where they start, where they stop, which way do they flow, which ones create, come together to create another one. So we just thought we'd take a quick segment and really dive into each of the rivers. And the first one I have is the St. Joe River. Uh, the St. Joe River is about 100 miles long. It starts up in Hillsdale, Michigan and kind of curves over into that Northwest Ohio and then kind of comes back into Indiana where it finds its way to St. Joe, Indiana, which St. Joe's known for there. 
Sackler Pickles. Yep, the pickles, yep. Then as it goes from St. Joe, it goes down to Spencerville. And as through Spencerville, it goes down into Leo, but there's an important structure between Spencerville and Leo. Yeah, Luke, that's kind of our first stop as we make our way down this river. And that's gonna be at the Hirshtown Reservoir. This was created in 1969, just kind of as a backup if Fort Wayne were to ever have a drought, that we have an additional water source. This will hold almost 1.9 billion gallons oh of water. God. It's an amazing space, over 260 acres, very similar to the size of some of like a lake gauge. So it's a great place for picnics, for walking, boating, fishing. It's a kind of like a little hint and gem in our area. Yeah, I would agree. You got to get up there. It's on that uh, north side of Allen County. Yeah. So as we're making our way down the St. Joe River, we go past the Hirshtown Reservoir. Now we're going into Leo. And as we get onto that southern side of Leo, we run into another a reservoir. Yep. So we're going to hit the Cedarville Reservoir. This one's slightly smaller, 245 acres, holds about 450 million gallons here. This one we've never had to use, thank goodness. And this is also a nice little area for picnics, for boating, great spaces we can use in our town. Yeah, so after we get out of that reservoir, we start really heading to downtown Fort Wayne, but we go by a couple important places. We go by Shof Park, uh, Concordia, uh, the Coliseum there, Johnny Appleseed Park, uh, and then we kind of make our way down through pa the Parnell. Uh, we kind of go by like Canterbury Green, that location, uh, and then it ultimately uh, makes its way to downtown where it goes to the water filtration plant, and the St. Joe is where we pull our drinking water from. Nice. Now, speaking of being downtown, Luke, you know, we're down here at Promenade Park in the Compass Pavilion, and the river behind us is the St. Mary's River. Now, the St. Mary's River is about 99 miles long, and it's located, or where it starts at, is actually in the western part of Ohio in the town of St. Mary's. Now, it comes down through St. Mary's near Rockford, Ohio, and then eventually to Decatur, Indiana, down near Poe, and then Quinby Village downtown near Foster Park, where a lot of people know where the Clyde Theater is. But that path that that river travels used to be known as the Black Swamp. And we've talked about the Black Swamp, you know, and how it used to be really popular with Indian tribes and fur trading and eventually turned into farmland where we're actually building, you know, Dickinson Farms in Van Wert, Ohio. But, you know, talking about the St. Mary's and the St. Joe, we're called the Summit City. So where those yeah. two rivers converge or the convergence or the confluence is actually where we get our name. So I get to do the third one, which is the Maumee. A lot of people don't know the two rivers you were talking about are coming from one way ending up here in Fort Wayne. There's another river that starts here in Fort Wayne, goes all the way up to Lake Erie. That's Maumee. A lot of people don't know this. There was a Miami tribe here. They used to call it the Miami River. Well, the French, when they first came over, could not pronounce the word Miami. They heard Maumee instead of Miami. That's how we got the Maumee River. So this one starts here in Fort Wayne, and then we take it all the way up to Erie, and here's how we start. We go in Fort Wayne, we go over by Anthony. A lot of people know where North Anthony, South Anthony come together. Mm -hmm. That's where it crosses there, heads out into New Haven, goes over to Woodburn, Antwerp, up to Defiance, right along there, Napoleon, and then it kind of follows 24, all the way up to a town called Maumee, which is right there by Toledo, and that's Lake Erie. So that's how we get that waterway, but that's why you said it's a summit. That one goes that way, the other two rivers you talked about are coming towards Fort Wayne. Makes mm -hmm. sense. Now, one way to manage water is by a dam. And in Fort Wayne, we have three different dams. First, we have the Hosey Dam, which is located on the Maumee River at uh, North Anthony and South Anthony. And this was built in the 1920s, and it was used to produce hydroelectricity. Oh, yeah. The second dam that we have is the St. Joe Dam over by the Johnny Appleseed Park, over by Coliseum. In Concordia. I used in to go Concordia. sit there and look at it, and yes. I'd skip classes. Yes. Just so you know, I could watch that. So. And this was built in the 1930s, out. and this was used as a pumping station to the water, water filtration plant. And then the last one is the Cedar, Cedarville Reservoir Dam. So this is over off of St. Joe Road over in Le the Leo Cedarville area and it helps manage the water for the reservoir to hold that back in case we should need it. Pretty important stuff for our rivers. This is a really good synopsis. I think Tony one time took his boat over the Cedarville. Yeah. Oh, so. hey, I'm, I'm impressed he admitted to skipping class is what I'm impressed with. Well, what a lot of people are also impressed with is just a few blocks from here. It's the landing. Okay. Everyone's used to the landing. There's Columbia Street. There's lots of places there to eat and have fun. But it used to be a major transportation hub right there with the canal system that we had. Okay. And literally, people could go from this area all the way to the Gulf of Mexico. There was the Wabash Erie Canal. It was built back in the mid-1750s, I believe. Mm -hmm. took four years to build it. 452 miles that were hand dug over those four years. And what was amazing to me is 
a lot of people gave up a lot of time and a lot of money yes. to do this, but there was a lot of people who gave up their lives building this canal. There was roughly one person who passed away for every 100 feet of moving this canal That's that way. That's 20,000 people that died yes. just in that four year period. Yes. Yeah, it was about 60 feet wide and about five foot deep. And the weird thing, or the sad thing is, they only used it for four years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Four years, because the railroad came along, and in 1881, the Nickel Railroad bought the canal, and that was the end of that mode of transportation. So they put their tracks along the towpath, didn't they? They did, That's yes, where exactly. I've seen that down yeah. over there. Okay, that makes more sense. So again, they called this the glorious gateway to the, to the west. You could actually get from Lake Erie to Fort Wayne, and then all the way to the Gulf, like we said. So that means this was a very, very important city because of all the transportation we had. This is great information. You know what? I think it was yeah. fantastic. And now we, we have our international yeah. airport. You guys want to get some packs? Yeah. So just jump in. <laughs> Do we swim along? been a lot of talk about a lot of the things going on here at the promenade at the promenade park one thing people don't talk enough about is this beautiful amphitheater that we're yeah, standing in right yeah, now they're cool. going to be doing all kinds of different shows and concerts here with this amphitheater right on the water you suppose anybody show up for our show no no uh, one's gonna show anyway up but us. anyway let's talk about water let's okay talk about history of water we go back to 1791 when we actually dug a well and there's actually a symbol of that well down yes, on east uh, Main Street at the old fire station. And what people don't realize, that well saved Fort Wayne. Mm -hmm. Because back when we were having the wars that were going on, the Native Americans were firing arrows into yeah. the fort that were lit on fire. And they were hoping that they could burn the fort down. But that well, they were able to get enough pressure, spray it all down, put the fires out, and we were able to defeat the Native Americans right. in that in that fight, yes. And then it wasn't until about 1880 that things began to change and we realized that we needed to dig these wells deeper. So we went to what we call deep rock wells over at Reservoir, reservoir Park, Park and created a reservoir over there. Now, a lot of people wonder where Reservoir Park is. They might have heard the name but don't realize it until I say this one term. It's the park that everyone who's ever grown up in Fort Wayne <laughs> wanted to have the sled go down it because that was just the best place in the winter Incredible to go. hill. It actually used to be twice as large, and they used that hill to dig their, their tank, to bury their tank, and they used the reservoir that they dug for skating and sledding, even a little fishing. It was a great place for many years. It, it's basically where Creighton and Lafayette are. You okay, can see yeah, it there, and yeah. it was a very big part of Fort Wayne history as well come 1916 when we were mm -hmm. celebrating our 100th birthday here as a city they put an island in there they had 50 bands playing there over Ooh. a one week time span they had an amphitheater probably about five times the size they of did. this because it held 14,000 people but they had over 50,000 people right. show up there and, for and this by party. the way it, it, that actually that reservoir actually contained over almost five million gallons of water that's just amazing it was huge and as I understand it Tony President Taft at the time actually attended that celebration right here in Fort Wayne Indiana because it was a big big deal and it makes sense because this was the hub of where transportation was because of the rivers the railroad and everything else was going on. Hey, I'm thirsty. Let's go get a drink. Let's do that. Ooh. Now we get to talk about the water filtration plant, and I think all of our viewers have probably driven by it at one point, may not even realize it's there, but it's got a rich history. It does, Luke, and it's located just off Spy Run. There, They have 25 acres dedicated to this site. Um, the filtration plant was designed in 1931. What I think is really fascinating is they built this in the middle of the Depression. The original cost was about two and a half million dollars is all it take to build this amazing facility. They spent another $50,000 just to change the look and feel of it mm -hmm. to go colleg collegiate gothic, which we're going to do a whole segment about the architectural history of the filtration plant later on in the show. And as you look at the way that the, the system actually works, the St. Joe River is what feeds into the filtration plant. At the very beginning, it's just a screen to help make sure we get rid of any big particles, logs, anything like that to keep them from going through. Then they test the water to find out what the, the contents of the water are so they know how to treat it as it comes through. And then from there, it goes to nearly a mile worth of uh, traversing through the plant itself as it uh, goes through sand beds, it goes through settling, they add lime to it, and to finish it all off, they also do an ultraviolet uh, treatment for it. So that takes everything through and clear purifies the water to the product that we have on the other side. Now, as you said that, that goes through a mile worth of 
pipes just to filter. That's an interesting fact. And yeah. there's some other interesting facts that go right along with this. So our current water filtration plant does about 30,000 gallons of water that it filters every day. But it has the capability of doing up to 72,000. So it's yeah. got quite a bit of room to grow with the city of Fort Wayne. Uh, back in 1931, when they first built that plant, they had 28,000 cubic feet of concrete, which is enough to pour a sidewalk from Fort Wayne all the way to South Bend. <laughs> wow. uh, but the current site itself sits or covers 2.3 acres worth of land that's all under roof. Uh, so quite a few interesting things that tie in with that water filtration plant. I know that one of the things that we're doing to help purify the rivers here is that we've got this huge drill that is going underneath our cities right now, about a $150 million project. And what we've got is we've, it's moving five miles underneath the city at 250 feet underneath the city. So what it's going to do is help to keep that drainage from the sewage from getting into our rivers. And what do they call that drill? They call it the Mama Joe. It's my favorite name. How'd they get there? <laughs> and they, they got there from using the names of the rivers. So we've got the Mommy, M-A, the St. Mary's, M-A, and... St. Joe. St. Joe River, J-O. So you've got the Mama Joe drill, and it is just something that kids around our, uh, around our schools are talking all about. All right, guys, that was some wonderful information about the filtration plant, but we got to get to the next segment where we're going to talk about the architectural style of the building itself. Sounds I good. love it. Well, one of the architectural gems of Fort Wayne turns out to be the water filtration plant. This was built in the 1930s during the Great Depression, and it's a beautiful building. It was done in the collegiate Gothic style, similar to the Indiana University campus. It's amazing how many people don't even realize this building is here because it's kind of set off a little bit. When they first were planning this water filtration plant, it was about $2.5 million for a basic water factory, basic area to just clean the water out. But like you said, it was during the Depression. And so for just 2% more, or $50,000, $50, they were able to come up with an architectural gem that is known throughout the world right here, and it's cleaning our water. And we were able to go down there a few months ago and take a tour of that gem. Some of the features of this collegiate Gothic architectural style are, of course, the Indiana limestone exterior. The impressive central tower with the Gothic lancet arches in there is gorgeous. And then red tile roofs. Yes. The thing that I love about this building is the carved panels that are going all around, the numerous buttresses of the building. They represent the regional flora or historic water infrastructure, such as wells, fountains, and of course, there's a lot of Native American themes as well. And there's also a lot of glass. There's arched windows and transom windows. And that's just on the outside. Once you step inside, then you have this lobby that is an octagon shape with very slender Gothic columns. And in the interior, they incorporated the Indiana limestone once again and high ceilings with ribbed vaults. The long filter room and hallways have lots of arches and well-lit arched window ways. There's so much natural light through this building. And then some of the ceilings even have some stained panels and wood beams. And then the pump room, which now houses the ultraviolet disinfection unit, has walls of glazed tile and accent tiles with, symbol, with symbols all about the confluence of the Fort Wayne Three Rivers. And all of this is at the Fort Wayne Water Filtration Plant on Spy Run. Now, Lonnie, we've been down here at Promenade Park all day, and I've really enjoyed my time here, but, you know, how does this show wrap into new homes? Well, we're talking about the source of water that ultimately ends in the homeowner's home. So we have to start at the filtration plant, where they're filtering the water from the St. Joe River, mm -hmm. as we said, and then it moves from there to all these places within probably a 15-mile radius of downtown. Right, so once it goes from the water filtration plant, it goes out several different directions in about 8 to 12-inch pipes. Right, and they usually keep those at least 4 foot, if not even deeper in the ground. Correct, and those go to all the different sides of Fort Wayne. And Fort Wayne has a pretty big footprint when it comes to where it's servicing the water. Right, and sometimes uh, they use booster pumps to, to give that yeah. water some pressure to get it to where you need to go. Yeah, so now when we're talking about our new homes, that water line you know, is headed down the, the main road, whatever it might be, and then we'll tap into that, and then it's about usually a four inch pipe that then runs around the subdivision or to those new homes. Right, typically the city's got these main lines out on main roads, and then we develop a piece of property, and we gotta get the water from the main road to the house, and so we're gonna use pipe, 
obviously smaller than the city's providing, typically, like you said, four inch. Yep. And again, how deep would you typically? Again, those are gonna be probably around that four to six, somewhere in that range. Uh, yeah. But then in each of those houses, there, there's a lot number established to it. So there's a tap that's in that four inch pipe. Right, we yep. got the main, we got the, we, the secondary lines yep. and we tap it. Correct. And then we wait for that future house to be developed. So when we build that house, then we'll unearth that tap and then we'll connect our water line to that tap. Now we used to use copper. Right, yeah, but, you're talking about the line that goes into the into the house yes, itself. Yes, yes, right, now right. we're using more of a PEX, a PVC material. Right. Uh, so we do have to still wrap a copper wire around that, that in order yeah, for yeah. the guys that are going around marking the locates to be able to pick up that water line since there's no metal involved anymore. Okay, so the water comes in, that's in its plastic, yep. as you said, to a main area in the house. And then it's, then what do we do with it? Yeah, so that, that main line comes up. Then the very next thing is you have a, a shut off. Okay. And then the water meter. Okay. And the water meters are becoming smarter. Fort Wayne City is right. uh, developing a new system where those water meters can communicate to towers throughout the city that then communicates back to the water department. So they get their meter readings all through that digital uh, way of doing things rather than having to manually go out and check those. Okay, and then at Granite Ridge Builders, we use a mana block or a manifold system is actually what we call it. Yep. That means we bring this main line into the manifold. Correct. We've got a cold side, and then we're going to send one line, main line, to the hot water heater. Correct. Yeah, so the hot water heater is going to heat the water up and it's going to dump back to the manifold. Now, the manifold has essentially like dedicated circuits almost. I okay. always kind of re refer to it as kind of like an electrical panel, but it's got cold and hot water lines going out both sides and headed to every faucet. So like a toilet would only need a cold water line, but a shower is going to need a hot and so, a cold. So you're talking about six, eight, 10 or 12 dedicated lines at each location in the house. Yeah. To provide the water. Yep, and then it goes to all of those different faucets, and usually those have a little bit of, you know, maybe a filter on them, like a refrigerator has a filter, or we got the uh, the screen that goes with the uh, the faucet. So there's filtration all throughout this process, but uh, it's, it's quite, I mean, by the time you go from Hillsdale, Michigan, all the way through our water filtration plant, all the way back out to wow. we're tra that water is traveling hundreds of miles just wow. to get to your location. Never thought about that. That builds some value in our water. And again, Fort Wayne has incredible water. Some people soften it, some people don't. Just be proud of the water that we provide in the Fort Wayne community. Oh, I'm thirsty. Look at this. Oh, some Fort Wayne city what, water here. This is what I've been looking for. You know, guys, I've lived in Fort Wayne for more than 50 years. And when I think about what's going on down here, I have never been more excited and proud of our city than today. It's true. It's a wonderful place to raise a family. And the promenade is just another crown jewel in the, the crown that is Fort Wayne. Beautiful things like our Fort Wayne Zoo, Science Central, Parkview Field, amazing things to do here. Yeah, and the trails, like let's not forget about those. They've really put a focus on the trails and there's over 100 miles, like I keep saying, you gotta get out and check these trails because it helps connect downtown. I love the architectural styles. You know, yeah. we've been known for a lot of different architectural styles. Modern is what we're doing a lot lately. I think it's the architectural styles. Yeah, Tony, you see all these commercial buildings and government projects that are changing our landscape. We build over 350 residential homes every year. That changes the landscape as well. Sure does. And, and speaking of the buildings and the landscape, I mean, all the things that are coming to downtown, you've got new restaurants, like Izzy was saying, there's just lots of possibilities and different things to check out in downtown that I'm getting really excited about myself. And then, of course, our water. As you saw in the show, we are so blessed with great resources and great water. Yeah, look at that. Oh, come on. Hey, I hope they all found this interesting. I like this water better. Yeah, we should go close water. Absolutely. As always, guys, we want to thank you for spending part of your day with us. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about who we are, what we do, and why we do what we do so well, please just pick up the phone, give us a call, visit the website below. Even better yet, come in any one of our front doors. We'd love to welcome you and talk about building your new custom home. This is for you. Okay. Welcome to Between. Ah. What was that? Yeah, what was that? <laughs> yeah, that was me trying to think of three things at once. We did 14 minutes of prep, and then that's how we do it. We lead right out into that.